just got back from China where we witnessed 14 world records broken by Galax, KFA2, depending on what part of the world you're in. Uh, yeah, this is all using their uh, Hall of Fame 980 Ti's. And I also want to say that we are going to make a really interesting, well, I think it's going to be interesting, uh, 15, 20 minute documentary about why people overclock. Because I didn't really, it didn't click with me until this event. For the your general consumer market, I think, yeah, it's definitely get a little bit of X FPS or just, just improve a performance in general. Sometimes things are a little sluggish, you want to improve it. And you get these, these extreme overclockers. It's uh, They have to especially, you know, get, get the hardware and they have to, you know, remove the shroud. They have to add special plates to them, special uh, cooling units. Uh, and then they have to use LN2 to cool this. You have to basically freeze you know the cpu down to about negative 60 negative 80 celsius and then in order to even turn it on you have to use a blowtorch to warm it back up to a, a bootable temperature so there's a lot involved in doing this it's not practical for home use at all and these scores are not indicative of what you're going to get on a, a pc at home they really push the hardware and i think that's the the whole goal here it's pushing the hardware just enough so that galax can look at it and be like oh well, under these extreme conditions, this and this and this happened. So on our next generation graphics card, we will do these things to improve. Some of the people. First off, the judges. We had Mad, Fred Yama, and uh, Duck. Then we had Ronaldo and Posse. Posse is, um, he's the only one there who's not a well-known overclocker. Posse is someone who is a developer on Future, for Future Mark, who makes all the 3D Mark stuff. Up here, we'll just scroll through these guys. Uh, Zero Den, Simizu, Lucky Noob, B-Boy Jez, Extreme Addict. X800 Pro, VV. And then we got Dr. Weeze, Dark Venom, Schnuckle Brothers, uh, Parika Bari, uh, Wizardy, uh, Dan Cop, and Bull Shooter. These guys were all really awesome. So the Galax Overclocking Carnival uh, was going on on one end, and on the other end, we had a lot of noise and lights and just a huge show going on behind us. <laughs> That was the Galax Esports Carnival. Because I, I, you know, I've never, I've never played uh, League of Legends. Uh, I've never played. I, I played Dota back when it was, you know, brand new. And I was just like, I don't really see the appeal or the point to this. And watching this presentation in this arena uh, with all of these people, I mean, there was bleachers and people were filing in to watch this. I'm like, where is the appeal of this? And it was noisy, it was loud, it was energetic. And I found it to be actually more entertaining to watch than baseball. But better than ESPN. And I'm gonna get hit in the, with a bat for that one. Day one, they were using all sponsored hardware. So we had, you know, sponsored motherboards and then sponsored graphics cards. So day one was all that. But the thing with uh, using sponsored hardware, sometimes it's really, really good, but everyone's used to a certain thing. So on day two, they were allowed to bring out their own motherboards and their own CPUs and stuff. And then, you know, they, they're using something that they already know the limits of. They've played with it a lot at home. And that's when all the records were broken on day two. We left the hotel at eight in the morning. We mm -hmm. got over there around nine, 9.30. And they started, like they hit the ground running. It was, they got in, got the equipment started out. Started building. Started building. Uh, by, yeah, by noon, they were pouring LN2 and eight o'clock is when we tore down. Yeah, and this was a machine, by the way. They had like a guy over in the corner, like distributing LN2 into thermoses and then someone else running LN2 back and forth from the tables so that everyone had a constant stream of LN2 so they didn't overheat any of their hardware. And they wanted to make sure that none of the people had to leave their stations to go get LN2. So it was just like, there were just clouds of evaporating LN2 everywhere. It was ridiculous. It was kind of, I mean, kind of cool looking, very mysterious. I mean, I felt like I was in some sort of a, I felt like I was in a George Lucas and Steven Spielberg a animatronic puppet movie or something. Just clouds of stuff everywhere and stuff happening. It was much cooler than a fog machine. Everything they were doing was 3D Mark. That seems to be the one that everyone goes for the, you know, the record breaking score in. Uh, day, day one, everyone was working individually and then they picked a winner. Um, Dan Kopp from Germany or just Daniel from Germany was the winner of day one. And uh, then on day two, they allow people to pair up uh, or, or work together maybe some teams it was mostly just um you know these these three guys from germany these, these couple of guys over here they're from brazil they put them together and let them work together as a team to try to i mean they were just going crazy trying to get the highest overclock possible and in the process of all of this they broke at the time uh, at the time of this recording they broke 14 uh world records on the 3d benchmarks dankov uh wizardy and bull the german team up up on top with many different records broken they, they broke the three-way uh in fire strike they broke the three-way in Firestrike Ultra, and then uh, 3D Mark 11 uh, that they've broken in that, and then Vantage. 
All right, so the Schneckel Brothers and Dark Venom, uh, as a team, these guys with the 2A SLI configuration broke the record for both Fire Strike, Fire Strike Ultra, and Fire Strike Extreme, all on 2A SLI with, uh, they were NVIDIA 980 Ti's. So they really had a, a nice um, two-way setup going. So this is uh, interesting. All the world records at the end of the event are, are in red, but I want to point out that Vivi and Dr. Wee's here on the 2A SLI's on both the Fire Strike, Fire Strike Ultra, and Extreme, uh, these guys did actually break the world record that was set before this event. And then in the middle of all of this, guys, these guys high five and yeah. And then the other guys came in and were like, oh yeah, we just beat you. It was an interesting event to see these guys cheering. And then suddenly two seconds later, they're like crap. And then they hit right back into it. Like we gotta, we gotta push it harder. We gotta push it harder. We gotta make this better. We gotta make it faster. I was over there bothering them. I was like, so how's it going guys? And it was going well. Then all of a sudden they're like, uh, not so well anymore. We're trying to get, dude, they were like down to the wire. So I was like, I'll leave you guys alone. Good, good, go, <laughs> yeah, it go, was, go. It was, it was pretty crazy. <laughs> All right, next up we had Extreme Addict and uh, Parika Bari. Uh, that's Poland and uh, France working together there, uh, breaking most of the four-way records, um, almost all the way across the board, everything except 3D Mark Vantage. Now, I want... Even got 3D Mark 11 performance. One of the things that happens when they're doing all these is the they have to successfully complete the benchmark. Right, it can't Cause, crash. Because if it crashes, you don't get the score at the end. Mm -hmm. And it has to complete the benchmark, and then they have to get a score, and it's like, okay, don't touch it. But they got to maintain stability so the system doesn't crash so while they they're keep doing pouring. it. So they need the judge to come over and say, "Yes, you did that. Uh, it's there. It's 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 been overclocked. It's run the benchmark, mm -hmm. and then you you get the score. And then you're like, they don't care if it crashes after that." Uh, Lucky Noob and B Boy uh, Jez they achieved the world record in two way performance on the 3D Mark 11 performance benchmark. So they did a pretty good job there. Very X800 Pro, but he did one way. Yeah, Dan and the German score is 33034, and these guys, uh, he pulled in at the last second and got a 33104. So we got 70 points higher on the 3D Mark II performance and uh, beat the record. Again, it was like last minute. It was like, what? So that was it. That was uh, 14 world records were broken, and uh, that about wraps up uh, the, the event. I mean, it was it was two days of crazy awesomeness. We've talked about GPUs the entire time, but they also were breaking some records uh, with, with memory sticks and or memory modules. I guess they were just going for like top scores on the, the Galax Hall of Fame uh, memory modules. I'm not sure if they actually broke world records, but they broke some Galax records and that sort of thing. So that was kind of fun to watch as well. And th th that has a whole it's a whole nother thing because you, you're dealing with everything from uh, frequency down to, how, you know, basically how tight it is. Like, I think Dan won that one again, and he won it with not a very good frequency. It was like 3000 megahertz, but his timings were like 15, 10, 10, 10, 10. So his timings were really tight, and that's what gave him the best performance. So it's not always about the frequency. If you can get those timings down, then could be pretty nice. Anyway, if you guys want to want to really get into this, do that, go to the forum, but um, stay tuned for our next video. We'll talk about reasons why people overclock, reasons why maybe you want to think about overclocking, and just how it can be maybe applicable bigger in a bigger picture than just sitting at your computer overclocking and getting a few extra FPS, because once you start getting into this serious overclocking, opportunities can arise. Maybe, maybe you'll be able to go to China and to compete in this. Maybe some companies will call you up and say like, hey, you're really good at pushing this hardware. You want to maybe work with us on making it better. So a lot of these guys that were there actually work together with different vendors to help improve their products. So stay tuned for that video. It'll be out pretty soon, along with a little bit of our China experience uh, in general. And uh, we'll see you guys in the forum.